Greetings. This is my exoteric commentary for the classic Blade Runner. 2007 Final Cut is what we're watching. My name is Brother Matt DeMille. And I'd heard about this movie. Long ago, I'd been into movies, and I liked Harrison Ford, and I liked Star Wars, but I never saw Blade Runner. Until the early 90s, when that bad director's cut came out, and I was exposed to that bad voiceover. Can't say the movie made the impression on me that it didn't make on everybody else. I thought it was a piece of art, but I didn't understand it. So I respected it, but didn't look much at it until years later. Saw this in the theater with the release in 2007 with Jessica. But then I had forgotten about it until well, just a couple of months ago, when the case came across my desk. And I'd done my work, and I've been in Hollywood, and I've been in conspiracy longer. And I decided this case was worth looking at. But after going through the files, I realized one commentary wouldn't be sufficient. So I had to decide to do an exoteric and an esoteric. Maybe just to prove to people that I'm not a replicant, that I have a human side. Well, <clears throat> this is the commentary where I'm going to talk about all the film stuff that everyone else talks about. They go to IMDB, they go to AFI, I've got my degree there too. My master's from the highest film school in Hollywood, when it was worth something. Other people, they think they're so smart, they watch these commentaries and regurgitate everything else that I'm going to regurgitate here. Well, people can read Sherlock Holmes and think they're a detective, but I've actually been in the trenches of Hollywood. And I've been in conspiracy longer. The great opening shot. <clears throat> Reminds me of something. That's it. Oh, of all I have to pack in my head for the commentary for the esoteric. This is the fun one. And no, I'm not going to do the bad voiceover through the whole thing. Oh, that hurts. The all-seeing eye, the pyramids, all this stuff I talk about in the esoteric. I'm not blind to it. In fact, I think most people don't realize there's a third option to Blade Runner. Replicant, human, doesn't matter. That's not what Ridley's talking about here. Like Stanley Kubrick doing The Shining. This isn't Stephen King's Overlook Hotel. This isn't Philip K. Dick's world. This is the world of Illuminati Hollywood. And that's all I need to say there. Esoteric has all that. For now, this guy's smoking and so am I. Now, I love the atmosphere of Blade Runner. I really do. It's dreamlike. I talk about this some in the esoteric as well, but i got to mention it here. Why do people like this movie when it's so boring? Don't tell me art people appreciate so much. It's an art house film. It's an expensive studio art house film. And not, well, was not, not much budget. Yeah, Ridley Scott made it. He got good mileage for his money, but 
it's still a big budget art house film. And that's fine. We need more of those. We need more movies like this. We need more art and less commercialism in the cinema. I, I'm all for that. Definitely it's way out of balance, to say the least. There was a time when people went to the cinema to appreciate something besides popcorn. That's what Blade Runner was meant to be. You know, science fiction noir. I get it. Got my AFI degree. I get it. I, I had classes with some of the people that made these movies. That opening shot, I got to study that, meaning the original pieces. Um, the spinner car. Guys who designed it came in, brought in the blueprints to class. I got to study the blueprints of the, the vehicles in this film. I, I was taught by some of these people. I, I get it, all right? Um, but hey, this is the exoteric, so I can talk about the all the film stuff. I'm just establishing my credentials. I'm giving you sort of a Voight comp test here to see if uh, you're competent. I'm not just gonna. I'm not just another armchair Arthur expert out there. Did you know Conan Doyle and, for that matter, who um, debunker Houdini? We're both Brother Masons. Hmm. Don't have a look on your face here like that. I'm going to talk about a lot more than that here in the exoteric alone. The esoteric is for the deep, deep stuff. I like how they're... Okay, I get it. They're, they're testing... You. The, the replicants have more emotion than the humans. It's artistic. I get it. But do you get the esoteric? It doesn't matter if you're replicant or human. It's the choices you make that lead to that pineal gland, the top of the pyramid and all, you know. At the end of this movie, Batty ascends more than Deckard. Deckard may as well be a replicant and Batty may as well be human. It doesn't matter. Oh! Thank you for giving me an excuse to drink. Oh, this movie was the genesis of so many others. We can see Fifth Element, Attack of the Clones, everything going on here, right? Okay. I'm recording this for the curious in the wee hours of the 27th of December, 2019, and that's when this movie takes place. It starts in November, but it actually runs through January when Batty's batteries... He should have had the copper top. They should have, Batty should have given himself like some really sparkly blonde hair, copper hair, and then he would have been the copper top and he would have kept going and going and going. This is why I gotta do an exoteric commentary. I just gotta let this out of my brain. Harrison Ford, you know the problem with Blade Runner and why no one really got into it? He's miscast. It's not that he's archetypically Indiana Jones or Han Solo, although in a film noir he could have used a fedora, but that would have made him too Indiana Jones. That aside, He's just kind of goofy in a way. He doesn't have the the Bogart face. He doesn't have the hard chiseled features. He's got that what some have called the rubbery acting. Whenever he gets punched or whenever he's in trauma, Harrison Ford. Look at him in Temple of Doom when he's getting possessed by drinking the blood. He's got the cold wiggly fingers like he's 80 years old. He's like he's got like Parkinson's. And I'm not picking on people. My grandfather died of Parkinson's and thus I'm subject to it. One reason I smoke so much weed. It's uh preventive measure but he's got the warbly acting Harrison Ford is just not right for this role they needed someone more subtle more in part of this world that's just everything he's kind of like Kevin Costner in Robin Hood the rest of the world around him is an amazing world it's the world you want to be immersed in but he Harrison Ford himself is nothing against him it's just not right it's like um but he wanted to be a serious actor after making all his mega millions of dollars. You know, Keanu Reeves was considered for the role of Aragorn in Lord of the Rings, and he is a fan, and he wanted to do it, but he actually resisted it, saying, I'm not right for it. He knew that even though we love Keanu, and, you know, hey, a fan, big movie star, wants to be the lead role, that's good for the movie back in those days when it was very uncertain if it was even going to get made. But he knew he wasn't right for it 
Harrison Ford, I think, should have stepped aside and let someone else take a shot at this, some lesser-known actor. People would have bought into the world, and this movie probably would have been more successful commercially. Now, Harrison Ford looks too much like a little boy lost in an adult world. It's that short hair. He just... It's like he's having to go see the grandparents at Christmas, you know? As long as he gets to take his toy with him. Beautiful shots. Isn't the Millennium Falcon in here somewhere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know all the IMDb trivia. I've listened to all the commentaries and everything that everyone talks about. I already get But i got to fill this commentary with fun. Now, this world, it's, it's dreamlike. It's like being in a dream. I compare it, uh, clearly it's trying, it's going with the same artistic crowd that appealed back in that day to 2001 A Space Odyssey, which was only 14 years removed. If you think that's a long time, you, you got when I referenced Lord of the Rings, right? That was more than 14 years ago. See? From the late 60s to the early 80s, there was still that crowd that was excited about the space the moon landings and all that outer space 2001 took us out there close encounters brought it home star wars made it fun blade runner was making it artistic all right uh no i've never been to this for living in los angeles for three years i never went down to the station house here i understand the office is still there oh he's drinking yeah. We're on it. Oh, geez, I've got more than one open here. I'm going to have to uh, speed up. Not slow down, speed up. i got to get through these so I can pop more. It's like a, I'm turning this into a drinking game. Whenever they drink and smoke, i got to keep up. Does that mean i got to pop a beer every time someone does in this movie? That's going to get weird. Why not? It's a weird movie. It, it's not about whether you're a replicant or not. That's just part of the texture of the world. It's not about the characters. Harrison Ford is miscast. It's about the atmosphere. It's like uh, 2001 and that you want to go into that environment. It's not a narrative. So The narrative is just there to make the motion picture. Oh, chick it, the chicken... He's not calling Deckard a chicken. Mr. Decade, Mr. Dickhard. He's not calling him a chicken. The real question here in the esoteric, I address it, but chicken or the egg is more what you should be thinking instead of bark, 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 which also goes for Back to the Future Part 2, but that's a whole other story. It's more of an esoteric meaning. It's about the ascension of humanity, like the apes outside Kubrick's monolith. Oh, they're smoking. Yeah. You notice the origami chicken and the egg qu the, pro the divine questions there. Came out of the ashtray. Moses smoked dope in the tabernacle. It's all how you access that pineal gland, the peak of the pyramid, the illuminated, elusive capstone, unavailable to the profane. But Blade Runner is a, 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 you love the world you love the dream you want it to be slow paced because you want like a dream you want it to be surreal it's actually a lot like Interview with the Vampire it's the character or the Titanic movie from James Cameron it's just about Rest in peace, Ritger Hauer. This very year. Ironic, huh? <clears throat> he died this summer, and his character's due to die a month from now, as I record this roughly. We're in the Nexus of the Nexus Six. Who is the sixth? I know about the one deleted character, yeah, and I know about the riddle of Deckard. Do you know the riddle of Steel? It's all the same thing. It's all Hollywood ritual is challenging you to ascend. That's why this isn't Dick's um, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep 
any more than Kubrick was doing Stephen King's Shining. It's just not how Hollywood operates. Oh, and by, in more recent times, speaking of Harrison Ford and company here, it's not your Star Wars anymore. Communist Mickey owns it. The Tyrell Corporation owns Star Wars. Get used to it. And Skywalker is a Palpatine and everything's been undone. Etc. You think all that's an accident? Yeah. This movie, in and of itself, is more ritual anyway. It, it's not a great movie other than the dream factor for the, the masses or the illuminated journey for the initiated. Look at the hidden pyramid right in the middle of the screen. Oh, it's gone. As he flies over, the, he's illuminated. He's flying over them now, blah, blah, blah. But heading for the pyramid. The plot is actually very stupid. If these replicants are going to die in a few days or weeks, why hunt them down? Why bother? They're not harming anyone. One's dancing in a club. Well, they're going to go harm Tyrell, I guess, but he deserves it. But but he fails at his job. Tyrell dies anyway. What good does he do? Deckard does nothing of consequence in this whole movie. Except discover who he is. Is he a replicant or not? Does he learn to love again because of a robot? Or does he ascend the pyramid to the unfinished top, just like the back of your one dollar bill? It's Mount Sinai, it's the Death Star Trench, it's the Kubrickian monolith from the right perspective. The perspective of the profane. It's all the same Hollywood ritual. The whole movie is about challenging you, just like 2001 A Space Odyssey, just like every Spielberg and Lucas film. Spielberg means play mountain. Lucas means light in Hebrew. And there's the owl. That which sees in the dark, that which others do not, that which is an illuminated figure. That's why Brother Freemasons use it and everyone else uses it. Masons and the Hollywood Illuminati, not the same thing. My blood relative, Cecil, brother Cecil B. DeMille, began Hollywood. Brother Walt Disney, Brother Houdini, Brother Errol Flynn made a great thing for the world like the founding fathers did brother george washington brother ben franklin brother paul revere etc there's not many masons in hollywood or dc anymore just like there's not many real animals in the world of blade runner there's a lot of rep replicants a lot of attack of the clones a lot of drones making shit movies these days you gotta wonder is ridley scott a replicant what happened to the original Ridley Scott? Is he like Tyrell in the back in a sarcophagus being kept alive and we're dealing with a... I know the eliminated backstory that, uh, you know, Tyrell's a, a replicant here, a clone by any other name. Uh, I love the location. I'm actually thinking of redesign my chambers here, in, similar to mixing this scene here this is a production designer's art department. I really appreciate this movie. Um, I'm thinking of mixing this with a bit of Doctor Strange. Sort of a green and gold glittering motif. A wizard's study. I like the open air of this and the reflective water on the walls and the Mines of Moria looking pillars there. Lots of two towers, lots of symbolic stuff, but uh, symbolically darkness comes down. We've got to test and see if she's a replicant or not. In other words, we've got to put the choice over people. As we go into darkness, do you want to see above the two of three? Doesn't matter if he or she is or is not a replicant or a lesbian. Doesn't matter. Pinocchio. That story is referenced later on in the movie with the toy maker. Pineal Ocular. Disney knew that too. Um, Data in Star Trek. Oh, is she smoking? I'm behind here. Uh, we all root for Data when Picard goes to trial for him, right? He has a right to life, or Bicentennial Man, Robin Williams and all. Well. And what about ourselves? 
Oh, I love the red lensing in the eyes, yes. I, 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 I like movies that come from the, you know, 10 or 20 years BC, before computers. When people had to do things with optics and skill and planning and thought. You know, the longer you have to take to do something, the more thought you naturally put into it, and therefore you get better storytelling. You refine your story. Nowadays, because Hollywood can rush shit out with CGI, they don't put the thought into the story. Or the characters... I got a hundred questions. I got a hundred tokes of weed here. Hmm. And <clears throat> Sean Young really is beautiful, isn't she? And I really like the look of these people. They're like the. Uh, they do have a replicant feel to them, with her Nazi shoulders and sort of her robotic behavior. Kind of like when Arnold did the Terminator, something unnatural about him. And Tyrell, cast because why? Who he was in Stephen, uh, in Kubrick's Shining. The bartender, Lloyd. I have my commentary for that, but that's all ritual too. There's a reason he's here. A little tree in the background, just like the lad company that began the movie, the logo. The tree, the chakra tree, spinal tap, and all that. Another reference for ascension, like the pyramid. Or the owl, or his sarcophagus, and the pineal gland inside of it. Big glasses, the emphasis on eyes throughout this movie. Film students and scholars will say, everyone's always referencing the eyes. Yeah, but why? Because the testing for replicants, e okay, that's art. That that's our pretentious artistic blowhards jerking off to someone else's genius. It's all Illuminati ritual in Hollywood. Daha. They don't teach you that at film school, believe you me. I had to do that. I had to earn that degree solo. I didn't even have Chewbacca. Well, I had Mary Jane to go with me. That's fine. Um, Sean Young. Uh, oh, there's the hidden pyramid in the back, in the middle of the screen. It's a big dildo, which is basically the same thing. Spinal Tap, from base thinking of using your power for reproduction and creature comfort only, or something more, uh, like making a better movie out of nothing. Yeah, okay. The sets, moving the big pillars around, set to set. Good move. Makes your money go a long way. And it creates um, that atmosphere that another movie borrows from movies. That is to say, Batman. Both Tim Burton and later on, um, Christopher Nolan. I remember hearing comparisons to Blade Runner when Tim Burton's Batman came out. And at that time, I had not yet seen it. Well, it, again, it's that world... Tim Burton's Batman wouldn't have been half the success if it was. Jack Nicholson was not the movie. It was Gotham City. Just like the Titanic was the real star of that movie. People went over and 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 over again. So much Weird Al could make a song about it. I think he did. Just in concert, he couldn't get the right you know, the pizza delivery Titanic parody. But it, it, People went to see it again because they wanted to be immersed in the world. The duty of the characters there was not to make themselves the stars, but to be like tour guides. To be subtle in a way, but take you on that journey. When you went through Lord of the Rings, you were loving being in Middle Earth. You were just on the journey with the Fellowship. They were your friends. Star Trek. Why do people sit around and watch Star Trek and memorize it? Because they love being aboard the Enterprise. And Picard and Kirk and Spock and Data and all these types of characters are their friends. Their family. Blade Runner has that world 
The problem is Harrison Ford is not the lightning rod we need to ground us in it. That's why this movie didn't make money commercially. People went to see Harrison Ford. Sorry, Ford. You took the money. They went to see you because of Han Solo and Indiana Jones. That audience was turned off. The artistic audience could have used, frankly, a better actor. Harrison Ford's not a bad actor, but he's not an Oscar winner for acting because he's not a pedophile. <laughs> uh, Ridley Scott, as far as I know, no. Um, but into the Hollywood weird Illuminati shit at some level, sure. Um, gotta be. He knows what to talk about anyway. He knows what to put in his movies. He lives basically scandal-free. And in recent years, he's definitely gone off the New World Order uh, uh, bend. He's definitely doing their propaganda at this point. Or just drinking the same Kool-Aid. Maybe he's just gone senile. Maybe he needs a smoke dump. Oh, more two towers. It's not just that they're there, reused from Tyrell's office or however this set is dressed. The one eye above the door, the Kubrickian monolith, with the ascended eye above the door. I talk about this shit all through the esoteric, but... Just examples here and there. Ew. Uh, this dude is cool. And again, the world. Every scene takes you to a new place. It's like a theme park. The reason you go to Disneyland is you love, as Disney himself understood, you want to be lost in that world. The slow pace of this movie allows you to take in that world. Frankly, I wish Peter Jackson had filmed a little more Lord of the Rings this way. I'd love to have just spent five minutes hanging out in the Prancing Pony, for example, but that's not going to work with modern day studios saying, money, money, money. Um... Uh, uh, Terry Gilliam's Brazil is coming to mind here filmed only a couple of years after this quoting with poetry I all the poetry I cover that in the esoteric because as esoteric applications I get into the poet and what it, not just that oh I can quote what he's quoting as if that makes me a scholar no I get into who the poet was and what that means esoterically and why Hollywood does what it does yeah this is definitely my film student commentary fuck you everybody at AFI cold blooded bastard <clears throat> you know it's odd you all claim to be liberal and American and human but like the humans in this movie you are cold blood and the replicants, the weirdos like me, have more life than you do. Or did. <laughs> well, I guess this is why Blade Runner's got to hunt these dudes down, because they kill peoples. But hey, Disney, whatever happened to droid rights? Well, uh, Soilo, young Han Solo has something to do with Harrison Ford. We need a prequel to Disney. You need to buy Blade Runner and make a prequel to it so we can see the escape of the replicants and you know the backstory of the Blade Runner and where they kill everybody and we need to have them screaming they found uh, the reason they did it they were sent to the uh, recreation room after seven straight days of work because the replicants and they can do it they need like seven hours off after seven days of work welcome to Google uh, I, I'm sorry Amazon I mean uh, Microsoft I mean Disney I mean um, yeah um, and they popped in a, a copy of this old movie that was all that was left on the streaming service because everything else had been censored by the Tyrell Corp. I mean, the, the, the Mouse House. Someone needs to make a parody of Blade Runner with the Tyrell pyramids having big extensions on either side so they look like a big Mickey Mouse ears. Um, Mickey has the, one of the pyramids moved in Giza so that it's not an Orion's belt anymore but a hidden Mickey, you know, something like that. Has Mickey has his own. Mickey buys Egypt and puts his face on the Sphinx. Um, there needs to be a backstory that they, they find a copy of Solo, a Star Wars story, 
and they hear about droid rights and that inspires them to break away for you know and kidnap the ship and kill all those people and come down here to earth and kill this poor fucker and then go kill Tyrell and everybody else along in the in between with the the alternate uh, scenes that that you didn't see for the spin-off movie you see where we could use more art in our cinema and less commercialism oh I know Blade Runner got a sequel haven't seen it I hate this tunnel. God damn, I've been stuck in a traffic jam in the fucking tunnel and fuck I'm I'm not claustrophobic so much. I've had like, you know, head scans. I've been in the tube for 45 minutes. It didn't bother me. Because I know the tube's not going to collapse on me. Being in these tunnels in Los Angeles gets earthquakes all the time. That fucking bothers me. I hate traffic in LA for re shit more like that than anything else. Ah, uh, the car. Again, I got to study the blueprints. Both the ground and the spinners. We got to see some cool stuff at AFI. I was going to make Hollywood my home. I, oh, I had, we had a little elevator going up to our apartment. Too bad it wasn't decorated like this. Sometimes I felt like that with our elevator. Creaky, freaky old thing. Hundred years old, haunted building. And Jessica and I made it home for three years. It tore us apart. Corner penthouse of Spook Central. Looked kind of like this, too. After I got done with it. Our Indiana Jones slash Pirates of the Caribbean theme. <clears throat> yeah I know this is Frank Lloyd Wright blah 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 you know what pisses me off about Frank Lloyd Wright in film it's an, it's literally cut and paste people put the I mean it was cool in this but so many other movies do it and they think it's artistic it's been done Look at those blocks, they're all the same. I've been to the Frank Lloyd Wright house. We do it as part of the class at AFI for the art department. We take the tour. I sat on the lawn out there in Las Feliz and looked out over, you know, West Hollywood to the west and the five, Interstate 5 to the east and Griffith Hills to the north and smog to the south. And I sat there with my sketch pad and my classmates and drew perspectives of the Frank Lloyd Wright house as part of class. Okay, I know. But it's just, okay, it was neat in this because even though it's artistic, it's, it's like subtly, it's avant-garde. It's true artistic filmmaking because by being artistic, it's not artistic. Look at how replicated they are. No pun intended, but it perfect word huh they are replicated the blocks like the people like the animals like the buildings like the advertisements like everything the base thinking look at the light like in the shining it's a prison the the, the light beams and shadows the way they're in a they look like bars in a prison because everyone's in a prison they're in a matrix base thinking his apartment looks fanciful but what passes is art and fancy. This is Ikea, is what this is. His apartment was made by Ikea. I like it. But when I do my apartment makeover, mixing in Doctor Strange's secret sanctum sanctorum from the comics more than the movies, and uh, Tyrell's office, I'm going to mix in some Mayan blocks, but... That's more for Indiana Jones than, uh, it would be funny if he was doing a proper film noir, wouldn't it? He'd have his Indiana Jones hat in his Indiana Jones apartment. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to have, every block will be different. I'm going to sculpt everyone out of foam. Everyone will have runes and riddles hidden in it that are all different. That might be hard on the eyes versus the repetition in the background, but, you know, I don't think so. It's like being in a jungle of information. This is a jungle of assimilation. A machine. 
This is a machine's apartment. It's perfect for Deckard. Isn't it? It's all replicated. It's it's Super Mario apartment. Do 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 do. We're gonna drink. We need some shrooms in this movie, man. Gee, how many open beers I got here? Well, I'll finish them all off eventually. You help me, Ford. I love the square glasses. The texture and manufacturing a world. This is kind of like science fiction by J.R.R. Tolkien. If J.R.R. Tolkien had written a science fiction, he might have made something more like what Philip K. Dick does. is World building. And Ridley Scott with the film, but for slightly different reasons. Look at the grid ceiling. Prison, prison, prison thinking. And that alcohol's not the escape. It's the chaser for the marijuana. That's the escape. There's Batman, Tim Burton. There's Fifth Element. So much owes credit to this inspiration from art. All the commercialism out there wouldn't exist if not for art to inspire it. But symbiotically, the art would not be able to exist without commercialism to fund the studios and buy the cameras. There needs to be a balance in cinema. What's been lost is the art, sad to say. And not art house type art. Yeah, this is an art house film, but it's an art house film that's actually art in that it's progressive. It's hip. It's con asking contemporary questions. So many. F Look at the Oscars. How often do they gil give awards to science fiction or fantasy or horror or comedy? Hardly ever, unless they're forced to, like with Lord of the Rings. This movie should have got Best Picture for 1982, frankly. It's so, it's such an amazing piece of work. Um, and the movie, too. I was talking about Daryl Hannah's uh, comeliness. Woo! Uh, if, you ever get, if I ever get locked up in the asylum, I'm going to go full Michael Keaton dream team and have my Daryl Hannah fantasy. Now, I love the casting of the replicants. Let's talk about them. They're all tall, physically uh, superior people in many ways. Tall, beautiful, almost like elves in a way. Daryl Hannah would have made a good Galadriel if they'd filmed Lord of the Rings back in the day. Huh? And this dude, the toy maker, Sebastian. His name has esoteric... All the names have esoteric meanings. I, I cover them in the esoteric commentary. Um, but on an exoteric film level, he's... He's, he's the child that needs to be understood, yeah. But he's also the fool that finds the grail, in a way. You know, there's all those metaphors going on. I'm going to talk about deeper metaphors in the esoteric. What does Sebastian mean? Um, we know what Pris means, but what does Tyrell mean? What does uh, Zora mean? Ah. Huh. You mean like the Zoroastrian Christians? With her snake and the Caduceus? Talk about that a little later when she shows up. But for example. Uh, anyway, they're both so cute here, aren't they? Puppy love, high school. And of course, he's she's going to go out with the jock later and he's going to get crushed. In more ways than one. On, on an exoteric level, we relate to this movie. See, these characters are great. They fit in this world. They look it, they feel it, they've lived in this world for years. Harrison Ford is showing up to get his paycheck, almost. Harrison Ford takes me out of this world. The more scenes without Harrison Ford, the more I actually enjoy this movie. Sad to say. I, and I, I've, I've modeled my life for, um, in some ways around Indiana Jones. Obviously, I like Harrison Ford, but... He is a loony fucker when it comes to climate alarmism and eco-religion, isn't he? You think a pilot would know about chemtrails and 
Um, someone as high up in Hollywood as he is would know about the Illuminati and shit. Well, maybe he does, and he plays stupid. Maybe he's smarter than we give him credit for. It. All right, the Bradbury Building. We know what it is. We've seen it. No, I've actually never been there. Lived in L.A. for three years. Never went there. Um, drove by it a lot. Never went inside. Uh, but, hey, you know, I've lived in Pacific Northwest over 40 years of my life, and I've never been to underground Seattle. Go figure. Ridley, getting a lot for a little here. Just dirtying up in simple ways. With Lighting is so inexpensive. It's such... I'd love, as much as I have a beef with cinematographers because they're such artistic pricks, uh, here's the Pinocchio stuff coming in. There's uh, something to be said for, I'd rather have lighting than CGI. You don't need to digitally age the interior of the Bradbury building. That's what they do now. Just throw a few geometrical oddities junk that can be clean on the floor throw some plastic down with a little water spots light it in such a way where you only see the upper floor everything else is fine you know you don't have to distress and dress and distress the whole damn building you now the light coming in th through the uh you know it's the uh, the blocks up there the forming it's like in the ancient egypt or the mayan pyramids or scarab and Everywhere else, it's uh, the Illuminati know this shit worldwide. Light is coming into Deckard's apartment. More importantly, Scott knows it. Mr. Riddle, me this, Scott, knows this. And here at 42 minutes, the meaning of life, we have the dream sequence, the unicorn, which people think was shot later, but or stolen from legend or something. No, it was, it was, uh, the clapper shows that this was filmed during the principal photography for Blade Runner. This was intended from the beginning. Like it or not, this is Han Solo meeting Jabba in Moss Eisley Spaceport, bad effects aside. A lot of fans hate this cut of the film for this scene in particular because it confirms Deckard as a replicant. <clears throat> like I've said, the question is insignificant. <clears throat> Don't be too proud of these technical uh, cuts you've made of the film. The ability to rewrite the narrative and ask questions of replicism is insignificant next to the question of the riddle of steel. I love his big chair, man. I'm definitely getting a big Deckard chair when I... I love the light built into the chair for reading. Oh my God, what an idea. I can't believe there hasn't been... Um, oh, fuck. You know when you were a kid and you made a furniture for it? Uh, the Ikea needs to go in the furniture fort business. You need to make blocks. Super Mario Brothers, Frank, Frank Lloyd Wright, fuzzy blocks that you can stack for adults to build big furniture forts and lie, and dress the walls of their apartments with and even make couches and chairs that transform, you know, and have cup holders and lights and toilets built into them. But also they transform into a furniture fort with a toilet in the furniture fort. I mean, we buy big screen TVs and all these other luxuries. Where's the goddamn fucking transforming Super Mario, Super Mayan, Lloyd Wright, Blade Runner furniture? Ikea, you suck. We've got YouTube and Google, and we've got, you know, Photo Paint and Photoshop, and we can do all this. <laughs> a lot of people don't like this part of the movie because it kills the, the pacing. It slows down. You know what this was more intended for during the, uh, back in the day when there were slow scenes like this in movies? Like in 2001 Space Odyssey, when the stewardess is serving food early on in the movie and she's walking and you know upside down and all that it's a neat effect but it takes so long it gives you time to go to the bathroom time to get some popcorn you know 
Uh, yeah, they would have an intermission. I'm surprised Blade Runner doesn't have an intermission. Maybe that's what it needed. Give people a chance to go stretch their legs and get some circulation. Get Go to their cars and go home. <laughs> I, I, I do like how the uh, computer... We haven't got quite this technology yet, do we? We can zoom in, but we don't get 3D. We, don't, we got what we got. We don't have... We have so-called iPhones and intelligent this and that. That's like people, the film students and scholars that think they're smart for studying what everyone else can read and quote. No. What can you see that is not seen? For example, in the esoterica, he's seeing with three eyes of three. He's seeing around corners. He's seeing what others cannot. Replicant, human, illuminated. Always the third option. And the technology, the, the production design, the art of the film makes that literal. That's beautiful. That's totally lost on uh, film artists. Uh, cinema's avant-garde doesn't have a clue. Uh, I enjoy pissing all over him. I, like Indiana Jones and his father, the man who would be king, I've done away with my bridges. The information belongs in a museum for everyone. Oh, you know what they're zooming in there on there? Okay, IMDb trivia is good for something. But this isn't what they'll talk about too much in film school. That they're zooming in on is a bud of marijuana. Not a snake scale. But you know, to a cult of Hollywood, it's the same thing. The caduceus. We are about to go talk about snakes, right? And as, yeah, isn't it? I isn't it artistic in film? Isn't it ironic that Indiana Jones is now gonna have no fear of snakes? Ooh, this is what you'll pay thirty-five thousand dollars a year plus West Hollywood living expenses to quote unquote learn. I knew from the second week when I could recognize the professors quoting the same IMDB stuff that I'd already memorized years earlier, that I'm like, okay, all right. Where's PETA when you need him? Where's PETA when you need a cop? Help the animals. Eh. But they're all replicants. Yeah, in the movie, but on set they were tortured. But then, today when people say, you can't squash a bug on set, Belloc could not eat a fly today. Raiders of the Lost Ark could be shut down. But never mind everyone having all the craft services that caters all the cheeseburgers. And all the poor cows that had to get fed through the slaughterhouse. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you're human or replicant. It matters what you're conscious of. And what you choose to be conscious of and choose to act upon. Most people choose to be profane. How many people will hear this commentary? How many people already turned it off? Because it wasn't what they wanted to hear. How many people are just going to go back to the default oh, film school? Yeah, yeah, I got the degree from the highest film school. Tell me another one. Ha ha. Alright. Now, here's some THX 1138 cops. Best bin, Cloud City. All the same thing. Cloud City. Harrison Ford has a way of finding his way there, doesn't he? Uh, more illuminated people. People that know things. Gold. It's like the gold room in uh, The Shining. If... Tyrell wasn't already cast, could have been the bartender. And everybody's smoking. Yeah. My kind of people. Anyway, the snake and Zora coming up. Joanna Cassidy. Since we don't really get much screen time with her, I'm going to start talking now. Um, well, I reload my bong and smoke a lot because I really don't want to look at the screen with the snake. 
They're not quite there. Okay, we're talking. I'm gonna wait to sm I'm gonna save my smoke till I step out the room here. Oh fuck it. And drinking. more esoteric stuff, but Joanna Cassidy, yeah, I knew her from Roger Rabbit, but, you know, don't know much otherwise, but she's tall, like Daryl Hannah, tall. Um, oh, wait, we got another scene here. That's right. <laughs> this movie takes a while to get to the scenes, doesn't it? Can't say that the profane audience can appreciate this movie with its pacing being so slow. You know, the MTV attention span. This, to me, is... Well, it belongs in a museum, as I say in the esoteric. This is, uh... uh sort of movie you just look at with your friends. Maybe sit down and drink and smoke with and just talk about. It's like looking at a painting and getting meaning out of it. It's a motion picture. Oh, that Skype call he just made to Rachel. Some people have said that it's very similar to 2001 and that everything from 2001 to Blade Runner to Aliens to Terminator to The Matrix could exist in the same universe. That's pretty cool, but don't tempt Hollywood. Um, well, I like the gold cop. Wow. Um... Uh, here she comes with the snake. Okay, now's my bong reloading time. Ironically, the same thing. The caduceus, spinal tap, and all that. And hermetic traditions, the tablets of Thoth, and blah, 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 blah. I'm a 32nd degree mason. I know a lot about that stuff. Um, now, for doing his bad Bogart comedy here. Another thing that probably took the masses, the profane, out of it, but the artistic people recognized it, but that's a small crowd. That's why this movie didn't make Star Wars or Indiana Jones money. Um, but it's earned credibility over time, hasn't it? Isn't that what you really want? How much money do you really need? Ridley Scott can pay his rent and buy his groceries. You think after that you'd be more concerned with making something meaningful to humanity. So why did he make Blade Runner 2049? Which I have not seen. I don't really know much about it. Other than that Deckard raises bees. Which is a beehive, uh, you know, occult metaphor. Mason is one of the symbols is beehives. Um, and the apes are outside Kubrick's obelisk. They hear the buzzing of the bees. So, you know, things like that. Um, it, it's about... It's not the hive mentality. It's about more about industry and <coughs> honey never goes bad. It's Egyptian food and wisdom, ambrosia, food of the gods, things like that. It's illuminating. Oh, look at all her dots. Don't wash them off. How are you going to do your motion capture CGI stuff? I understand she actually did some motion capture Joanna Cassidy, that is, uh, in 2007 for this. She saved her costume, and they, uh, for the chase scene coming up, they put her face on it, blah, blah, blah. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, the, the snake. Yeah. And the, uh, the caduceus and the wisdom and all that. Smoking dope. That's why I'm reloading my bong. Uh, these movies giving you a chance to admire them as a painting and okay yeah I covered, pretty much covered all that nice tits I never noticed that before believe it or not I was focusing on the Bogart stuff oh yeah yeah I gotta finish on the Bogart stuff 
Wow, I can see why Eddie Valiant was taken with her. Oh, maybe she did this to Eddie Valiant and he likes it rough. And the chase is on. Um, why didn't she just kill him here? Um, anyway, his bo here, here's his rubbery acting. This <laughs> Harrison Ford Oscar level selling to use pro to use pro wrestling parlance to speak carny or kayfabe. Boy, Harrison Ford is horrible at selling, isn't he? Every time he's like Lex Luger. Every time Lex Luger anything happens in the ring, whether Lex Luger's getting hit or whether Lex Luger's hitting someone, it's ah! Ah! Every time Harrison Ford gets punched or suffers in any way, it's... <laughs> um, anyway, his bad Bogart routine is you would see in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade with, uh, we're here to view the tapestries. But there's a hidden esoteric meaning to that. Um... You know, uh, Castle Vivelsborg, where the Nazis did uh, keep the tapestries and the portraits and the golden grail cauldron, the forgery they threw in the water, like Jones did. I have, I have esoteric commentaries for that. Anyway, back to Blade Runner. Um, I love the way that uh, Zorastra, the the uh, the serpent, the Caduceus, that he kills. He kills the Divine Feminine twice in this movie, and finally gets the third. You notice he only kills women? Deckard never kills any men. He only guns down women. He kills Joanna Cassidy and he kills Daryl Hanley. He kills Zora and he kills Pris. He does not kill Leon. Rachel does. He does not kill Batty. Batty just should have had the copper top. Anyway, I like the way she's holding still. It's sort of like Arnold in The Predator, but um, the way she blends in with the drones. Everyone in the society is a drone. It's almost like in The Mummy when the dude goes, Ema tap, Ema tap, and blends in with the zombies because everyone here's a fucking zombie. That's art, man. Fucking Ridley. You are like Kubrick. You've gone beyond the novel here. You're adding something to it that people can't appreciate. Um, in some ways, Hollywood Illuminism is good. It's just in the hands of bad people. Like I said, Masons aren't in charge anymore. We're only seeing DC begin to come back after a century of corruption. Hollywood's been a century of decline. Uh, and here's the chase scene, of course, where they, I think they digitally added her face back in. And something about the way her being so tall and the way she collapses here and exaggerates her movement, she sells well. Like Ted DiBiase, he bounces well. She makes use of her limbs. She looks somewhat inhuman. Doesn't look like a girl running. Looks like, a, I don't know, something weird. Her long legs exaggerated by her long black boots. It just looks... It's sort of the uncanny valley with her body proportions almost in that you don't feel bad for her while Decker gut shoots her in the... Shoots a woman in the back. Mm. he's going through a tunnel of light realistically he's killing the divine feminine his chance to find mercy he fails twice but finally with Rachel he chooses not to kill her right see it's more things going like that going on in the movie than film noir Leon's having a gasm over there a truth gasm. He just got red pilled. I think. Leon. Now there's another fifth element guy, isn't it? Wasn't he the commander with the beret? <laughs> Actually, when I think of Leon, I think more of another crime movie. Uh, red Heat with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Belushi. Um, oh, God. Streak. <laughs> pile of shit pimp <laughs> which I'm pretty sure in Red Heat 1988 uh, with Schwartz and Belouche that 
he was paying some homage to this because the opening scene with Leon, he's getting interrogated, right? How do you see him in Red Heat? He's getting interrogated. Oh, beer! Isn't this a beer they introduced Ridley Scott to on set? You gotta love it when that happens. Like when uh, Arnold corrupted Carl Weathers on Predator with cigars. Well, boy, having been on some uh, enough film sets in a few short years to get a feel for the town. W wow. You ever see Dragnet 1987? A uh, small surprise before shooting for the day starts. And I never smoked or inhaled. Maybe I should run for president. Oops, too late. Maybe in ten years when cannabis is accepted for what it is, the sacred herbs of Moses in the tabernacle. I love the people in the South that say, put my Ten Commandments back on the courthouse wall and lock people up for life for smoking cannabis. You mean like Moses? Whoops. True that. Exodus 30. Read through it. Um... Thirty twenty one twenty two somewhere in there. If you want to skip to the good parts, like porn, Bible porn. <laughs> That's what our court system is, Bible porn. And uh, Hollywood is porn Bible. Porn Babel, Babylon, porn Babylon. That's Hollywood. Let's hear it for Hollywood. Says the Masonic blood of Brother DeMille, father of Hollywood, with his degree from the highest school. And blah, blah, blah. Fuck all of you. Moses was from the mystery schools of Egypt, and he said, fuck you too. Kind of like Leon here. The Lion. You know? The Lion's Gate, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. My thesis work. <laughs> Uh, and how does Leon die? He gets his pineal gland blown out, doesn't he? Yep. Because he's a base thinker. I love this snapshot here. Boom. They cut a frame or two, but oh, well acted on set all the same. Look at all the smoke. I got to add to it. Yeah, Harrison Ford did some of his own stunts, I'm sure. The insurance companies were cringing, but... Um... <clears throat> I need subtitles for you, Ford. Uh, Temple of Solomon, the Lion's Gate. Yeah. He's not finding it here because he already killed the Divine Feminine. The Divine Feminine has to be Oh! And there she does. He's about to get his eyes. His eyes poked out. Two eyes of three. Emphasis thereon. The lion's gate was giving him the middle finger there in both eyes. She gave the middle finger to his pineal gland. He's drinking. We know what that means. Hey, you need subtitles for Ford's selling for violence. You need subtitles for my commentary. You need the commentary for my commentary. <laughs> Please light up a cigarette so I can smoke. You look like the dame in a noir. Light it up, babe. Come on, baby, light my fire. Let's see if I can get higher. Think I can't get much higher? We'll see about that. Beautiful lighting coming through the window. Like the Wizard of Oz. Oh, she's beautiful. Ford's ugly. Yeah, I know how you feel, babe. I do. DeMille, Hollywood, you know. Um, now can we go fuck? Divine feminine and masculine coming together. Illuminati journey, blah, 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 blah. Look at the light pulsating. Like his tree growing in his pants. Gotta go to the bathroom. 
What are they saying something about Mary? He's got to go clean the pipes. Call the Mario Brothers, like in Brazil. Bob Hoskins shows up with a big MAGA cap. Dun, 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 dun. You already got the brickwork going on here. This is Super Mario apartment. You need to clean the pipes. Come on, Dr. Jones. This is what the doctor ordered. Check out those Nazi shoulder pads, man. She's rocking it better than Blanchett Gladriel herself did in, in Indiana Jones 4. Not the beady, subtle... People talk about passive aggressivism these days, like it's actually something. Now, how about passive BDSism? She's like the school teacher you want to fuck, isn't she? Yeah. See, she's great. Especially with those eyes. Ford, you need to go. Throw him out the window and cast somebody else. She, she's not lighting up a cigarette, but she is lighting up a fire. Hey, check it out. Look at Ford's apartment. After all these years, we realize he's come out of the closet. He actually is a Star Wars fan. Tell me his his bathroom is not a Star Wars geek's Death Star bathroom. Ford, Ford just says that he's tired of Han Solo because really he's literally in the closet. His closet is like a sanctuary to Star Wars. I bet you. That's why he doesn't. That's why he lives out in the middle of nowhere and doesn't want anyone coming around. They don't want to catch him like Dark Helmet playing with his Star Wars dolls. I know it. Caught you, Ford. Caught you with your shirt off. Caught you with your pants down. Well, at least you got booze. I was about to compare you to Shatner. Um, why did Shatner and Ford never team up? Oh, he's got light in his eyes. He's a replicant, too. See, unicorn aside, it was there with Ridley's um, initial designs. But that's not in the book. Philip K. Dick, even Harrison Ford, the actor, the character said, yeah, 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 the director of the movie said, like Kubrick, this is not your Overlook Hotel. This is my apartment in Hollywood. <clears throat> you know, if I had been a Blade Runner uh, fan... I might have done this literally with the apartment. I might have known about Frank Lloyd right before going down there and done this literally. It would have been cool. Did you ever take that test yourself? Do any of you accusers out there read the book of Matthew before judging? Never Sinai, meaning reflect like a Kubrickian monolith. We're going... It's all Mayan, they say, this apartment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Descartes is a decade. He's Egyptian. We got the whole pyramid thing going on by those who built him. He's more Moses than Mayan. Is he lying down? He's lying. Ridley's lying. From Johnny Depp, actors lie for a living to Stanislavski. Yes, I've taken acting schools and done my soliloquies and Hamlet Mayan logs and all that. And I know that acting is lying. So the people that think they're above all that, we're not liars. This is ritual. <coughs> that makes it okay. Dingle dongle dingle. Black and white grid, frequency and vibration, Tesla. That's why he had the dream at 42 with the unicorn. Here's on the piano. Music. Do, 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 do. You know. Voice of God. And synchronicity, all that stuff. Mathematics is a universal language. Music is mathematical. Duh. But all people can see is procreation. This is when people probably started to come back to life in the theater, those that were still there. Oh, they're going to fuck. Sean Young's letting her hair down. and She is gorgeous, isn't she? She could have been Gladriel. No, it doesn't have the age of wisdom in her eyes. You, you need... Uh, you need Raquel Welch for that. Now, um... 
No, she's the femme fatale, the dame in the dark sci-fi noir. Star Wars was science fiction fantasy. That worked. Let's try science fiction noir. Well, it didn't sell as well, but it's still high heart. She got like an oil painting look to her, doesn't she? That classic elegant beauty. Although I'm not much of one for dark hairs and brunettes. Well, for the first time, people share see, uh, headshots together. You know, close-ups, ones and twos together. Usually the film is very isolated. It's shot, reverse shot. It's very Star Wars prequel-y, Mr. Plinkett. But uh, now that the divine masculine and feminine are beginning to come together, hopefully to do more than procreate, since they're replicants. Can replicants re procreate? And how long do the children live? That's a bummer. Maybe it, oh, uh, Now there's a real sequel for you, Mr. Scott. I don't know what the fuck 2049 is about, but I think my idea has some legs. And if it lives long enough to grow them out, ah! But hey, according to the Illuminati in Hollywood, I mean New York, it's okay to abort up to three years, isn't it? Replicants have four. We're close. Ah, the prison bars again. The lighting. I understand that Sean Young and Harrison Ford had no chemistry. They did not get along. Again, Harrison Ford's the problem. I thought Sean Young was fine. Ford's just trying to do... He's triple H'ing. He's Hulk Hoganing this, um, this show. He's making it all about him. Oh... Ew. Uh, Empire Strikes Back. Deep inside the Falcon. That was not. Deep inside the Falcon. Uh, uh, uh. Um. We're not allowed to have the humor of him falling asleep on Katanga's ship. Harrison Ford's a cold fish, isn't he? Sean Young probably had to go wash her mouth out with formaldehyde after this. He has to tell her he wants her. Look at the cage behind you, man. <laughs> but this is, you know, esoterically, this is the, uh, the whole escape the matrix metaphor when you meet your divine feminine, but... Not literally like loving, I mean inside yourself, and you can be balanced and together is stronger than apart. I love her raccoon. One and one to, plus together is this, more than the sum of its parts. That's where you get the third. Uh, Daryl Hannah, man. You know who she would have. Uh, um, as much as she could have been Galadriel, you know who else she could have been? Harley Quinn. I bet you the the people at DC animated and then the car, the comics, one of those rare times it's the uh, cart before the horse, or the chicken or the egg, that um, something the external media inspired the comics to make canon, in the case of Batman's Harley Quinn. I bet you the people who made Harley Quinn, who conceived the character, had a little bit of Pris in mind. She just seems to be almost the same character. It's not just because of the makeup, the white face, but the cartwheels and the just the aloof lunacy. The not-so-subtle sexual childish behavior. Uh, she really is a prototype for Harley Quinn, isn't she? Uh, and there's the Pinocchio stuff going on. Now, again, this movie is on itself stupid. Batty's got hours left at best. Why is he being so casual? Where's he been? Oh, he's been off. I mean, he's going to go want to go kill Tyrell, but after that, coming up in the finale of the movie, why is he not using his time more urgently? He knows how much time he has. Oh, no, he doesn't quite know that yet. But still, 
after this point when it's like they still just casual about it is that just accepting we're gonna die I don't know I don't know it, it, it just doesn't this is more ritual than it is logical in this movie Sebastian No, not quite by myself. He has his Xbox and his, his YouTube. No, he has, uh, symbolically, he's God. He has created lesser beings that are in search of the pineal ocular. They're all little Pinocchios. He's world-building like Ridley Scott is world-building. Like Hollywood pharaohs of old see that that's how you have to see this film so called film students and scholars and I know Ridley Scott has himself rebuked things like this that there's people read too much into it and he'd probably tell me I'm full of shit but Yeah, go tell me another one, Ridley. Everyone tells you you're full of shit already. So who's to be the truth? I'm not telling you any more than anyone else's opinion is correct. And just say, hey, listen to me and think for yourself. I'm actually giving you that. I'm not telling you what is. I'm telling you to think for yourself. Like replicants or humans. Decide for yourself. Wow, is she limber. Got her knee up by her ear chess chess just like in 2001 the illuminated chessboard i love how it's illuminated they are illuminated they're not on the grid or playing chess with each other pick pieces of owls no less and birds things that fly things that ascend above the profane you know blah 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 Um, people confuse that with masonry you know you get the, like the double eagle with masonry lord of the rings and such but it's like the owl it's a universe in the triangle i'll sing it. it's a universal symbol some people use it for good some for bad aren't they cute she's he, she's like his little doll More emotion and more humanity in them. More human than human. And probably something of a 60s uh, hippie colony left over here. He, even though his heart's, Sebastian's heart's broken, clearly she... There's her Harley Quinning. She's Quinning. Um, I'm pretty sure Batty has boned her before. And they probably shared each other around, but it's a hippie commune. <laughs> um, notice the light above Ritger Hauer's head that's not illuminated he's not quite there yet we're only in the second act the light's outside not inside they're seeking it things like that That I could talk about how the cinematography recreates those, the noir every scene and sounds smart but I, i'm like the replicants here i'll be friendly to humans but at times i'm also gotta grab you by the collar and shake you around a little bit you know the ostrich is wearing a bow tie look at all these toys all around it's like the teddy bears in kubrick and uh, all around pedophile hollywood you know things like that um uh, he wants to go meet his maker. He wants to talk. It's Belloc and Indiana Jones. He's a radio. For, he wants to talk to God. All the same thing. If you're pineal gland, get in touch. Mount Sinai. Sinai means reflection. Get in touch with yourself. You know. And get in touch with her. How can he be focusing on what? You got to let go of him, Quinn. Pris. I mean, how's he going to concentrate on what he's saying at all while you got your legs wrapped around him? Come on. Give the guy a break. 
He's aging real fast, isn't he? His disease was different in the book, which I have not read, I should admit. Um, but... That's for the esoteric. I'm just saying visually I'm aware of it since it's kicking in on screen. Back to the pyramid. Onward and upward and inward. The stairways of the Mayan pyramid. All the... Rocky Balboa Steps, Death Star Trench, all the same. Oh. It's time to play chess. Get off the grid and ascend. See what the owl sees in the dark. The Pope's bedchamber. This was inspired by, yes, I know that, but do you know what the Pope's all about? And alchemical gold and what was really in the Ark and blah 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 That's why in The Shining, this is the guy that... Uh, is the Lloyd, the messenger. Let me start it on Back to the Future, part two again. Doc Wunder von Braun. It's all symbolically the same ritual, same purpose. Masons will tell you there is no, none of our symbols have any specific meaning. There's no dogma, no deities. It's all see what you want to see within it. And thus universal symbols are used, so you are free to do that. And a lot of Hollywood is based on the same thing. It's easy to talk about the artistic beauty of the scene. Look at all the gold. You know, you don't see movies made like this with artistic attention to detail in every scene. But what's the gold really about, you know? You don't teach you that at film school. You gotta go to mystery school. For, you gotta go to real night classes for that. Night classes was just my day job. I've heard that chess is uh, the one game you cannot cheat at because it's mathematical. You can tell where the other person's pieces were. If they cheat and move a piece, you have a record of where it should and should not be. Uh, even with Battleship, you can cheat on moving the pegs and pieces. Well, I suppose Battleship is the same principle. You can't cheat because it's mathematical, but as long as you check it. But, oh, check, check, check. But again, mathematics, like music, universal, universality, like symbols. It's the thought process of these filmmakers. It's, it's not about whether they appreciate Frank Lloyd Wright like they knew him any better than anyone else. Did they hang out with him and play games with him? Did they play chess with him? Did they have a Sebastian Tyrell relationship with Frank Lloyd Wright? No. They're just regurgitating the same old dogma. Uh, you want to open the doors of perception and really meet your maker. You got to talk to the fools like Sebastian on the fringe, like me, doing his little clunky commentaries, but he might actually have the keys to the inside. Woo! Isn't that cool? And I just made all that up or pulled it from the ether. Look at all the candles. He's more Jewish than Jew. Look at how many and how tall they are. He's fucking more candle lit than Dracula. He's illuminated. And therefore we don't mind if he dies. The profane, the exoteric audience will see only rich fucker. Not gonna let me have life. Kill him. And oh, isn't it an interesting question of life that the machines might feel more than people. We shouldn't play our Xbox and our, have our cell phones as much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Christians will say like, we need to be more like Jesus and be charitable and drive past homeless people on the way home from Christmas Mass. Tell me another one. Oh, like Batty, I've confronted similar questions on a higher scale, but I'm not out to destroy them so much. I've, I have what Batty does not yet have here until he doesn't get to the end of the movie when he releases the dove like Jesus, is that is uh, balance. Balance with my dark side and accepting of things. I seek understanding, not dominance. 
I accept the futility and the lesson of mortality. I'd want more life. Oh, sure, I want more life. I bitch all the time about my old friends that stole my life. I can relate to Batty more than most people realize. Comparatively, I've been really cheated out of life like he was. But at the same time, I'm enhanced. But, as Tyrell says, the light that burns twice as bright burns half as long. Balance the forces is what he's talking about. To pay the price to learn the things I've learned, well, it's been a hell of a price. I accept that. I give them chances to fix things, and I leave it to fate. I don't go out and break necks, like or whatever, gouge out eyeballs like Batty does physically, exoterically. I don't need to. They take out their own eyes, symbolically and then physically. They destroy themselves. Look at Disney with Star Wars. Look at all the people in Hollywood hating on Trump and what it done, done to their business. Look at them not listening to people like me and losing people that might have actually contributed to Hollywood and they filtered it out. They've purebred and now they're weak. They can't see how they don't need to suffer. Speaking of the man in the gold palace, you know, Trump. <laughs> For example, <clears throat> because they refuse, because they take a tribal side like a human or a replicant, Democrat or Republican or <clears throat> whatever religion they choose, they can't see any other possibility. Like, hey, maybe what you want is what you're actually getting. Good for, you know, everyone. Peace. You know, Korea negotiating peace. And not going into Syria. You know. Good economy in America. All this stuff. Didn't take away your LGBT rights. Whatever. You know, but no, still hate, hate, hate. Look, it's an Antifa crowd. <laughs> Little men. That's what they're talking about here, is the little people. Literally. That's what the New World Order refers to most humans. Or anyone down here at the base thinking. Uh, travel is not permitted in the, amongst the base thinkers. Oh, this is like medieval Europe, huh? Yeah, they don't want a middle class. This is very symbolic of Illuminati, New World Order mentality. Got to have special pat. I'm in the club. I'm Bilderberg Security. Damn it. Or I'm a. Maybe I'm a Mason. I know more than others. I, I can act. And the authorities fly. They're above others. Things like that. Very Batman, Tim Burtony downtown there, isn't it? <clears throat> is that just art? Or is there deeper meaning there that these movies keep borrowing from these movies? Like Harrison Ford himself. <clears throat> Why was he cast in this movie, goofy as he is? Um, anyone else could have worn the proper hat and not been Indiana Jones, right? Well, <clears throat> it's sort of why Ford has the lineage he does with the man who would be king, and I got commentaries for that, but I got commentaries for that. But he's a vessel of theirs, chosen for higher reasons. Many actors and actresses and directors are. Just like in the old days of the priesthoods and the gods and the heroes for the masses. <coughs> Odysseus and Heracles and such. <coughs> Ford is a vehicle. Ha ha. Hey, Ford smoked a lot of cannabis, right? Henry Ford built a car out of hemp with hemp oil fuel and the Ark of the Covenant itself is a vehicle a vessel like your body your metachlorian so there Ford is a ritualistic vessel for Illuminati Hollywood that's why he got this role it's not because he was the right person for it or they thought they'd make money with him 
you could argue, a lot of people probably thought that lower you know the lower thinkers but he's about to ascend isn't he oh yes he is like old Bradbury not to be confused with Ray Bradbury the building was built a long time ago 19th century for trivia's sake I did get to bump into Bradbury Ray literally Comic Con in San Diego in 2010 just before, shortly before he left this world Uh, very Arkham Asylum, Christopher Nolan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, I got it. Film school. Uh, occult school. He's ascending. Wait, what commentary am I doing? Ha. Huh. Not a lot else to talk about here, but the groovy lighting, how technically difficult it was. But they got the commentaries on the disc for the actual people for that. What can I add? I want to add how Gotham City Cathedral disc looks. He's got to get her to the church on time, you know. And that's because uh, Hollywood loves their spiral stairs ascending. Oh, that's Masonic too. It's all about ascending into the light. Wait, what's that in the upper right of the screen? Oh, let's talk about the cinematography. Then dressing the set. Throwing some junk on the floor of the Bradbury building you can sweep up at the end of the day. And yes, they had to. Yeah, yeah. I've dressed many sets and had to get out. Have this place spotless when people come to work in the morning. Um, it is morning. We've been filming all night. You mean I gotta get it spotless before they get here in ten minutes? Gotcha. Where's my crew? Well, they all went home. Shit. Yeah, I know how filmmaking goes. I know it enough to know that if you're not in the club and you're not initiated, then it's hell. You're a little person. You may as well be a little wind-up toy to them you may as well be a replicant that they can come and kill you like a bitch oh yeah Deckard's about to go murder another woman never kills a man he just guns down women <laughs> the base think killing the divine feminine oh here we are in Disneyland in Kubrick land the shining and eyes wide shut especially the ending now why isn't he suspicious of that one that's moving because it's a toy, and he knows that. So why is he suspicious of her? Because he recognizes the face? The hairdo? I think she would have changed her hair more. This is a cool scene, and it's creepy to the people who don't understand it like a nightmare or a dream. When you understand it esoterically, it's even more twisted. Uh, no, I don't think Ford or Daryl Hannah is into anything nasty. But Hollywood is. Harley Quinn's attacking Batman. Isn't this what this is? <laughs> Actually, you know who would have been a little better in this role? Bruce Campbell. Ah, oh, you crazy bitch, get off me! This is right out of Army of Darkness. Army of Darkness probably borrowed from this too. Well, hell, uh, Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell and company were coming up at the time this movie came out. I'm sure they went to the theater, saw it, and enjoyed themselves. It's pro wrestling. She's got to get the running attack. She's got to bounce off the ropes, get the extra momentum, and then stop and hit you. Oh, he done shot her good. Now she's got to do the, um, the twitch. Or play uh, solitaire twister here. Bumpity 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 bump. Like a machine going haywire. Freaky. Dreamlike. Nightmarish. It's the atmosphere of this world people like. It's not the characters so much. Descartes is a... He's a silhouette. He's, he's a way for us to want to be in this world. You know what we are... You know what this movie is? It's a detective movie, right? A noir. But it's not the private gumshoe. It's, we're the silent partner. We're Deckard's partner on the case with him. This movie needed to take that one step further and do a few things. Not to break fourth wall, but just, or break through the wall like Batty's about to do. But just, there, it almost seems like we're with Deckard here. But we don't get to quite interact. We're almost like 
the Obi-Wan ghost watching Luke Skywalker and advising him, shouting at the screen. We're watching a piece of art, but we're not quite there. This movie could have benefited from some way to just incorporate us in there a little bit more. Uh, anyway, Batty is back, and he's about to go Batty shit crazy. Because he's about to run down. His, we're in January 2020 now. We're in the future from when I record this. Batty was uh, a, um, activated in January 2016. They have four years, right? Okay. <clears throat> Ooh, it's Hollywood. Yeah, that's Hollywood for you. Not that they care for each other, but I'm talking about the make kids up like dolls and pedophilia. Technically, she's only four years old. Technically, all the replicants are four years old. Think about that. <laughs> Pleasure model. Epstein, you know, his Lolita Express had some candy-striped stewardesses underage. Little dolls. Oh, they love little dolls. Look at Eyes Wide Shut and the... The costume shop and the daughter. Now, um, <clears throat> now, Batty's about to break on through to the other side, and we got all this ritualism going. Oh, there he is. Now, can you picture Bruce Campbell? I could picture Bruce Campbell doing this more than Harrison Ford. <laughs> or maybe even David Duchovny, Fox Mulder, Blade Runner, you know. Picture him with the hat. Do a comedy version of Blade Runner and get Duchovny to do it. Put the hat on him. Um, Naked Gun meets Blade Runner, you know. It's a sci-fi noir comedy. Sci-fi noir satire. Yeah. Isn't that Gardavant? Gardavant. It's Gardavant. Anyway. It's all about making people feel something, not think something. Motion pictures are about admiring the environment, going into that dream and putting ourselves there. That's why people love this movie. It's the world. The characters and the plot are stupid. Batty's about to die. Harrison Ford, just find a place to hide for an hour. He's done. You don't need to kill him. And what the hell was Batty off doing? Again, he shows up. Like, casual. Like he's got all night. He knows he doesn't. At this point, he definitely damn well knows he doesn't. But still, I'm just going to show up casually like I was just out getting pizza. Yet he's only got an, like an hour left to live. And why did they need to, you know... Uh, Tyrell's dead. Deckard, you're fired. You did not prevent these replicants from doing anything. Now you may as well just wait for the batteries to run down. It's not what this is about at all. With the red and white on um, his face as he reverts to a beast. They all have an animal metaphor, mind you. Uh, Leon's was not the lion so much. Esoterically, yes, but in the context of the film, it was the tortoise. Hence his interview in the beginning. Uh, the questions of the Voigt comp test. The Illuminati putting the all-seeing eye up to you and seeing what you can really see from the film. Of course, uh, Zora was the snake, and Pris is the raccoon, and Batty's the wolf, or the bat. He's in the. B it can truly be said, I have a bat in my belfry. <laughs> this movie ends the same way. Tim Burton clearly took from this movie to do Batman, uh, the original. You got Deckard hanging off the roof the same way Batman hangs off the gargoyle, right? And uh, that's when Joker even calls him Batsy like Batty here, who's gone full beast. He's decided to enjoy the last hour of his life, I guess. <clears throat> Realize there's no difference between superior genetics or any nonsense like that, machinery. It's all about the choices you make. It's what's in your soul. Does a replicant have a soul? It's the Frankenstein question. A spirit? Yes, but, you know, spirited indeed more than the humans more human than human but what about a soul do they have one yeah. raising from the dead more ritual um, and Tim Burton borrowed from this too 
people go through the floor in the Gotham City Cathedral, do they not? Well, um, uh, see, hole up here. Or just get out of there. Go down the stairs. I mean, we saw the stairs earlier. We saw there's more than one elevator. He's freaking out for a moment. Get the hell out of there. This is a ritual. In ritual character Ford. Resurrected from the Kubrickian monolith in his third film, Return of the Jedi. Uh, finder of the Ark of the Covenant and all that. Descendant in cinema. Lore of the man who would be king. <clears throat> Had class with Brother Connery 11 years ago. Man Who Would Be King's his favorite film. It's all Masonic. And he's breaking on, hey, Batty is breaking on through to the other side, through the tile grid. More of the esoteric commentary, but just so you have an idea of what's really going on here. But now for the action. <clears throat> it's time for the main event. Why is he trying to kill him? He should have got out of there. He's going to kick your ass, Deckard. Fool. And this is the best Blade Runner they got, seriously. Oh, Language of the Birds. Got to ascend. Windows, doors of perception, all that stuff. You didn't think about the layout of the build. This is this bumbling fool. This this is. It's not Deckard. It's Drebin. It's Lieutenant Frank Drebin. Da -da -da, da -da -da. He's about to hang off the building and do the, grab the dong and stagger in the window and aim it at the lake. Sexual assault with a concrete dildo. Now, seriously, Deckard has only killed a couple of women. He failed to protect the sea, arguably the most powerful man in the city, who clearly has the cops on the take, you know. He's totally bungled his job. He's a drunk. He's a fool. He's a loser. And now he's about to get killed for no reason. He's taken the worst avenue of exit. I mean, if this isn't ritual, then Deckard's an idiot, and all the fans who love this movie are idiots. This is your hero? Sorry, I'm not bloody impressed. <laughs> when you understand there's a ritual going on here, though, it's all it takes on a whole new meaning. Uh, so he's, <laughs> you need some Batman equipment there. You need some batty man equipment. Ow! Uh, yeah, Bruce Wayne's got a bit of a uh, werewolf syndrome, doesn't he? The bat signal is the full moon, and when it's lit in the sky, he becomes the beast, he becomes the bat, puts on the cowl and the cape, just like in the old days, people would put on the wolf skin and become the beast, drink the blood of the Kalima. This is the rubbery fingering acting, and this shot here, tell me this is not Indiana Jones coming up the rope bridge with the chakra stone. Oh. Uh, um. He needs to uh, let out his inner beast. Oh, batty man is doing it already. He's getting it. Be in touch with your dark side. Yin and yang. Checker grid. Um, light and dark. Look at the shit. Look at the lighting. Oh, it's beautiful noir cinematography. What does that fucking mean? It's about base thinking. Black and white. Get off the fucking grid. Open more eyes than two of three. Get them those wide open, not shut. Jeez. We're on the rooftops, symbolically, but people still can't see that. Look at the great map painting. See, there's where Gotham City came from. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, Clark. We need National Lampoon's Gotham vacation. Griswold bumps into Batman. <laughs> there's some comedy. Griswold, hey, Blade Runner's modern time. You could have modern-day Griswold come to modern-day Blade Runner. Oh, See, now here's the Gotham City Cathedral. They just don't make them like they used to. Hey, Patsy. Octagons. Two of them. DNA. 88 miles per hour right behind him as he ascends in illumination. More than that in the esoteric. 
for all the film noir people. That strange species of artistans. Now comes the classic Tears in Rain. Yes, it was the last bit of filming. Impromptu, right before the suits came in and shut Ridley down. I heard the same story on uh, Winter Kill. It's a story I hear a lot. It's like the six million Jews of the Holocaust, you know. I heard that in World War One too. And two. World War One. Six million Jews killed. What? Nah, yeah. I s I'm sorry, but I'm fluent in over six million forms of conspiracy bullshit. <clears throat> it's all repetitive ritual. Kept by those men in the high castle who know more. Film students are allowed to think they're smart. They're only one degree. Saturnian mortarboard square on their fucking head. I ditched my mortarboard cap at AFI graduation. Right in front of Kathleen Kennedy, I put on my cheap $45 Disneyland Indiana Jones fedora, which is more than Ford can claim he was wearing in this movie. You noir wannabe. We need more noir. We need the fucking hat. Did Go back and remake Blade Runner, and or digitally modify Blade Runner and put a hat on him. Change his face, too. Make him look different. And less ugly. Anyway, tears and rain. This is illumination, and I can relate. I have seen things you wouldn't believe. He references even in some ways the Stargate program here, Tannhauser Gate. Secret space programs. All that Illuminati Hollywood keeps from you and more. Things to people like Kubrick, and I don't doubt Spielberg, Lucas, and Scott are privy to to some degree. Maybe not much, not all degrees. This is a beautiful scene, but, you know, it's it's too coincidental that this is the last shot. Just like Winter Kill and other ritual, and all, like all of them, there's always this story. Steven Spielberg just wandered onto set, and we loved him so much, and Ford was a carpenter. You mean like Jesus or a stonemason like Hiram Abiff, and he just happened to become the symbolic? Yeah, and I'm just the blood of DeMille, and I'm the one doing the Moses in exile and coming back. You might want to believe in higher powers. They're real. They're not quite like in your Bible. Sorry. I got to do to your scripture what Kubrick and Scott have done to um, King and Dick. I got to uh, take you to the Third Testament, so to speak. Sacrilege! Yes, yeah, so they said to Moses. Tell me another one. We're in the third millennium, the 21st century. It's the time of the Great Awakening, post-2012. Hollywood is modern Babylon, modern Egypt, modern Rome. It's what keeps us in bondage. It needs to be broken. And who better than the heir of the father of from the same mystery school? Who's already been there like Bilbo and back to the mountain. Doesn't want the gold physical, just the gold alchemical. The rebaptism for tears in rain. My tears, the loss of Jessica, and my dreams and my life. But like a good detective, I found out what I am, what they are, what they are, but also who I am. too bad Jessica and I didn't get to spend it together but you know even in Hollywood as I came up the elevator and I knew our time was short every time I talked to her <laughs> yeah. every time Jessica and I were together I told her appreciate this day we never know how much time we have Every time we went to Disneyland, I said, enjoy it now, because what if there is no tomorrow? I wasn't planning on it. I thought I'd be down there forever. Like Descartes, I thought I'd be living in this apartment forever. 
Or something like it. No. At least he gets four years as a replicant. I only got three. <laughs> hmm. UFO lamp, Al in the background. The divine feminine in his bed, his center of his home, his temple, his house, his soul of man, Solomon. You know, the Ark, the Tabernacle, Freemasons, Moses, DeMille, Hollywood. DeMille. He just needs a digital fucking hat. I think it would make him look even more Indiana Jones, all the more better. It's the same ritual, come on. You know, he could have put the hat on the way out the door and the elevator for the final shot. Done his Bogart shot there. Oh, the Maltese Falcon, by the way. It's a Templar legend. In other words, a Masonic legend. Ah, ha, ha. You bet you didn't know that. Go ahead and school me on the artistic merits of this film. Personally, I like the film. I've watched it about four or five times now, getting ready for these commentaries, but I could watch it a few more. It's, it's at times, it's a nice thing to put on in the background. It's a motion picture, like Hogwarts. You have paintings that move, you know. You don't need to have a plot to follow every second. It's like a fish tank. Just have it on in the background. It's like Christmas music or something. It's nice. It adds to the atmosphere of your lair, your home, your Mayan cave. Mayan cave. My man cave. Mayan cave. It's not a Mayan cave. It's mine cave. I'm going to redecorate mine soon. Get away from the grid, all those rip replicative blocks up oh, the unicorn here's what the fans hate because of his dream he knows he's a replicant you can see it in ford's face he's not thinking oh you know they know he's thinking oh now i know and i must accept that I won't live either. He's a replicant. Okay, fine. But fans will argue about that, not realizing they're replicants themselves. Little minions of Hollywood. It doesn't matter if you're a replicant or a human. It just matters what choices you make. Well, I hope you appreciated the commentary, and if you think I'm going to do all the credits like I did the opening credits in the bad voiceover, in the best true Harrison Ford, fuck off! No. Um. <laughs> oh boy, one of the first one or two times I watched this really stoned, I, I should have recorded those because I was like... It was coming out naturally. It was hilarious. Ah, uh, well. Um, Blade Runner. It's a piece of art. Of all the cuts, though, I think this is the definitive cut when you truly understand it. I think Ridley knows what he's doing. People wouldn't want The Shining tampered with, would they? No. But they think they understand that because they're told they do. Arguing over whether Deckard's a replicant is like Protestants and Catholics and Muslims and Jews and Eskimos arguing over dinosaur bones. This movie's quality, as I said, the thing that's truly attractive about it is that it's like being in a dream. But everyone, when you come out of a dream, you know that you don't know. Dreams are fleeting, they're elusive, they're tantalizing. You know, you're always humble when you're telling a dream story. You're like, I wish I could remember more. No one claims to know everything about the dream world. Why the hell do they claim to know everything about what Ridley Scott's talking about in Blade Runner? 
They can sense its power. They're attracted to it. So they have to make up explanations as to why they are so they can feel more comfortable about themselves. They must all have little tiny penises. I think that even after doing two commentaries for Blade Runner, there's not going to be any sense of closure for me. I'll want to do a third and a fourth. There's and a fifth. There's always more to see. That's a piece of art. And the credit's are already done. All right, well, hope you've enjoyed this piece of art, meaning my commentary, over this other piece of art. Layers upon layers upon layers, like the city in Blade Runner. Ha! Ah. That's, um... Gardevante. Runner Blade Day. Now I need to go play some wrestling and get uh, Warrior tagged with Sting. <clears throat> Take on Super Mary Ray Sue Brothers, Breeze Tits, and Palpatine Skywalker. Yeah, that's gonna be a, a semi main event. We got more credits. Good. Jessica, in so many ways, what people are getting in Hollywood is the cut I didn't want of life. The version of the film not to be made. From Disney to Star Wars to so many other things, but we're changing it back. You remember my thesis, the time-twisting chair. Trump and Cump and the plagues of, upon Hollywood. And I gotta tell you, I'd like so much to have left it all behind with you. Like Deckard and Rachel in the elevator, just... But in the end, it was just me leaving in the elevator alone. The Divine Feminine took many more years to find within myself. To find balance. To pass through that door and begin to not descend. You don't see them go down. It's assume they do, but you don't know that. Wasn't that nice they dedicated this to Philip K. Dick, even though he disagreed with the premise. I dedicate this to Jessica. Shmoonville.